Thanks for joining us here today. If this is your first time or you're returning to us, let me encourage you to go to JesusIsTheRock.org. While you're there, give us an update on how God is working in your life. Now, if He's working life change through our ministries, let me encourage you to give to us financially on the website by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Thank you so very much for tuning in today, and welcome to Church. We welcome you this morning. If you're visiting with us, your guests this morning, we're glad to have you here. Happy that you found your way uh, to Church on the Rock, and we want you to make yourself at home. And I'm going to try and um, <clears throat> preach you a little pre-Christmas message this morning. Actually, it'll take me a few minutes to get to Christmas, but we're going to get there. And uh, it's going to be, I'm, I'm, you're going to have to bear with me. I'm still coughing and hacking, and I've been through three rounds of antibiotics and five shots and still trying to get rid of some stuff. So just uh, hang in there with me. But we're going to be short and sweet. Uh, well, we're going to be short anyway. Okay, I won't make any promises about sweet. And at the risk of sounding like Donald Trump, I'm going to climb up on my soapbox for a few minutes this morning. I don't do that too often. But there's some things that I want to share that as I was reading this scripture this week, and more than just the scripture, as I watched the news and I watched things unfolding this week, I just couldn't get this off my heart. And understand, I'm not here this morning to talk about Democrats or Republicans or independents. I'm not here to uh, talk about blacks or whites or, or gays or straights or, or uh you know, Baptists or Pentecostals. I'm not here to talk about the presidential race. I want to talk about the human race. I want to talk about people, all people. Uh, we're going to read out of Romans. I'm actually going to, I read it in the 830 service, but I'm going to kind of skip through some of the, the first verses. They're really just greetings and salutations from Paul and talking about, you know, how he longs to come and, and be with them here at the church. Um, but... I'll, uh, let's pick up in verse 16. Uh, guys can catch up with me on the video back there. We'll start in verse 16. And Paul said, see, I'm not ashamed of this good news about Christ. It's the power of God at work, saving everyone who believes, the Jew first and also the Gentiles. This good news tells us how God makes us right in his sight. This is accomplished from start to finish by faith. As the scriptures say, it's through faith that a righteous person has life. But, there's a but, God shows his anger from heaven against all sinful, wicked people who suppress the truth by their wickedness. They know the truth about God because God's made it obvious to them. Ever since the world was created, people have seen the earth and the sky through everything God made. They can clearly see his invisible qualities, his eternal power, his divine nature. So they have no excuse for not knowing God. Yeah, they knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. They knew God, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they began to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. As a result, their minds became dark and confused, claiming to be wise. Instead, they became utter fools. Claiming to be wise, they became utter fools. And I think I've, I've realized, I've known it, but I've realized more and more, it's just really made me aware this week, and it's becoming more and more evident every day that we have become a blind nation being led by fools. Now, you, you can get upset with me this morning. You can disagree with me. It's okay. Uh, you have the right to be wrong. I'm not going to get mad at you. But... We're in sad shape in, in this country. Um, the sad thing is we're surrounded by so much foolishness, we don't even recognize that it's foolishness anymore. 
We, we've gotten so used to the darkness, we don't even, I mean, it's just become the norm. We, we, we have fools setting the bar as to how we should live and what's moral and what's not. And we, we follow blindly along with us. I mean, it's gotten to where, you know, you, you get up in the morning, you turn on the news, and you're just waiting to see, not if there's a tragedy, but where the tragedy was. Where was the shooting last night? Where was the drive-by? What bomb blew up what? What terrorist attack here? The only thing that surprises us anymore is if you turn on the news and it's good news. You think, what's that all about? We've gotten so used to the darkness that it, the darkness doesn't look dark anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. We've made unbelievable strides in communication, in transportation, in technology and medical science and many other fields, we've become so wise in these things, making incredible strides, but all the time we're becoming more and more spiritually bankrupt. We're becoming more and more pagan and heathenistic by the day. It's amazing. He said, yes, they knew God in verse 21, but they wouldn't worship him as God or even give him thanks. And they begin to think up foolish ideas of what God was like. God's this and God's that and God does this and God does that. As a result, their minds became dark and confused. Claiming to be wise, they became utter fools. You know, when I see ISIS, or ISIL as the president likes to call them, killing Christians, that really doesn't shock me anymore. It bothers me, it just doesn't shock me. When I see Muslim extremists blowing themselves up in the name of religion or radical extremists flying planes into buildings or terrorists shooting up places of business or schools, it really doesn't surprise me. I guess we've sort of come to expect it. And how sad is that? How sad is that one fact that that doesn't just make us gasp and take our breath away when we see or hear that, but it's just another day? That's the norm. Doesn't really, doesn't really shock us anymore. But I think what really bothers me is when I see the leaders of this once great nation, this nation that was built on godly principles, that stamped on our money, in God we trust, that coined the phrase, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. When I see this nation, who claims to be so wise, have become fools. Fools in their thinking. The darkness, Time Magazine came out and listed their person of the year for this year. I don't even know who it was that won it, but, but they came out and they showed their short list before of who the candidates were. One of the candidates was the leader of the ISIS movement. And I'm thinking, really? That's your person of the year? In the United States of America? I am so sick of hearing about people being offended even by the name of Jesus or offended by prayer or offended by worship. I'm so tired of hearing about political correctness. I will, I, we need to be talking about political corruptness instead of political correctness. Spiritual blindness, perversion, and twistedness. The scripture tells us that their minds became dark and confused. And this is not just some wild-eyed radicals anymore. Right here in the what used to be called the Bible Belt. I'm not sure we have a Bible Belt in America anymore. But 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 just you know, several years ago, you remember in over in Montgomery, Alabama, the 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 wise leaders forced them to take the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse. You know why it may offend somebody? It's not politically correct. Just a few days ago, somewhere here on the coast, I don't remember if it was Harrison County, Hancock County, somewhere, they were forced to remove the nativity scene off the courthouse lawn because it could offend somebody. Well, guess what? That offends me. Where have we gone? How long will God continue to spare this nation? Now, let me say this as a disclaimer here, because we have a lot of fun around here during football season. 
Because I'm an Alabama fan. We got LSU fans. We got Ole Miss fans. I think we might even have a few Cowbell fans. And, you know, we got all this, and we have a lot of fun. We have these rivalries going. But something really bothered me this week, and I'm telling you, if this were Alabama, I would be showing you this too. So this is not to diss any college. The truth is it's probably going on in colleges all over the country. It's just this one happened to make the news this week. Watch this little clip that came out this week. This is with Ole Miss. Tonight begins Ole Miss's annual celebration of the holiday season. This year, the celebration will be held under a new, more inclusive name. Student Activities Association Special Events Director, K.P. Mays, was behind the decision to make this change. We really wanted to uh, kind of like change the atmosphere from what I hear that would explain the name change. Um, Grand Ole Christmas was just, it connoted too much Christianity on campus, and so we wanted to have a more inclusive environment for the holidays this year. This year, the SAA is... Too much Christianity on campus. The name, the Grand Old Christmas, as it's always been referred to, calls too much Christianity on campus. So they've changed it now to a hotty toddy holiday. Fools led by morons. Sorry, my old Miss friends. Like I said, you're just the one that made the news. You're not the only ones out there. These are just a few examples. And I hate to be like Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, but this country's traveling at warp speed towards self-destruction. If you can't see that today, you're spiritually blind. How much longer will God wait before he turns to his son Jesus and says, get up and go get my children? But enough about what others are doing. Muslims and ISIS and our foolish government and spiritually ignorant people in our country. I'll climb down off that soapbox for a minute. Let's make it more personal. Look at verse 23. He says, instead of worshiping the glorious ever-living God, they worshiped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful thing their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. And they worshiped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself, who's worthy of eternal praise. Amen. So let me just kind of wrap this up this morning by just asking you a couple of questions. I don't want you to answer out loud. And it, listen, this is not condemnation. It's just revelation. I just, I've, had to, I've had to ask myself and try to answer these questions honestly this week. So I said, if I did, then you could too. Just a couple of questions that you answer honestly to yourself. He says in verse 25, they worshiped and served the things God created rather than the creator. Who will you be worshiping this Christmas? Jesus or something else? Who's going to receive the lion's share of your time, your money, and your attention this Christmas? Will it be Jesus or will it be something or somebody else? What's the focus of our attention? Who are you going to spend your money on this year? Jesus or somebody else? See, I believe it was Jesus himself who said, wherever your treasure is, there will your heart be also. I can tell you where your heart is. Look at your checkbook. You know, when Jesus was born, there were two groups seeking him. One were wise men who were seeking Jesus so they could worship him. And then there was Herod, 
who was also seeking Jesus, not so he could worship him, but so he could destroy him. Now, that's not what he said. He said, go find him and tell me where he is so I can go and worship him too. That's what he said. But you see, the problem is his actions show differently. See, what you say is just what you say, but what you do is who you are. Talk to people all across, you know, anyway, you know what's Christmas about? We celebrate Jesus' birthday. That's the birth of Christ. We're celebrating this. But what you say is just what you say. What you do speaks to who you really are. The scripture tells us about a people. He says they, they worship the Lord with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. It's too easy to give the Lord lip service and then completely leave him out of our everyday lives. How will you worship the Lord this year? With your lips or with your heart and your time and your thoughts and your gift? Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Now listen, let me say this. I love Christmas time. A lot of people have a lot of different feelings about a lot of different holidays. Christmas Christmas is my favorite holiday season. I like the time building up to Christmas. I like people are nicer at Christmas. You notice that? You walk around the parking lot and everybody say, hey, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, you know? People, I just love the Christmas season. I love Santa Claus. I love trees. I love presents. I love to get presents. I even love more to give presents. I, I love that. I'm not anti any of this stuff. I, I love the Christmas season. But church, not at the cost of leaving Christ out of Christmas. Not at the cost of forgetting what it's all about and who we're celebrating. and what I don't want to worship the creation rather than the creator. Yeah, we're going to be receiving a Christmas gift for Jesus this year. We do it every year, and we help families that are in need. But more than that, more than, more than your money, if you don't have anything to give to that, it's okay. More than that. Can we just forget about political correctness and, and, and just make up in our hearts and minds that we're going to serve the creator rather than the creation? There's a scripture that gives me some hope about the only hope left. The great prophet Isaiah said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, step one of the instructions humble yourselves. Step two, and pray. Step three, and seek my face. Step four, and turn from their wicked ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins, and heal their land. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know if that's going to happen this side of heaven. I really don't. Not in this country. God's going to have to work a miracle. It's going to take some kind of some kind of move of God for that to happen. I don't know if it will or not. I really don't. So my hope and my trust is not even in this world. My hope and trust is in Jesus Christ and the advent of his coming again. Of his coming for a church without spot or without wrinkle. So my prayer to you, my hope for you, is that you would have a great, great holiday season. We'll still have a couple of weeks moving into Christmas, but I want you just to think about these things. As we go and we buy presents and we celebrate and we do all of the things and we have the family get-togethers that are so wonderful and important, let's remember as we do, church, that He is, it's not just a saying, and a, He is the reason for this season. It is about Christ. And let's be careful that we don't worship and serve the creation more than the creator. Even our own families. We love them. My, my parents and my children and my grandbabies now, and they make Christmas so much fun all over again. But they're still the creation. God created them for us. 
And I never want to put anybody ahead of God. In fact, I think it's a fearful thing to put anybody, anybody, anything ahead of God. He's the creator. Everything else is the creation. Enjoy them. Have fun with them. But don't put them. He said, you, you'll have no other gods before me. Amen? Amen. Thank you. Um, ushers, if you would go to the back. If you are prepared this morning and want to give a special offering into this gift, um, we, the ushers will be at the back. You're welcome to do that. If you're not prepared to do that, we'll do it again next Sunday one more time, and then we'll try to get these uh, gifts dispersed to where they, they need to go. Um, but I do thank you for being here and uh, invite you to be back again on Wednesday nights if you'd like to get in on the last couple of sessions of this uh, series on Advent and uh, next Sunday morning. Would you stand to your feet with us? Again, we are incredibly glad to be joining us here today at Church of God. I encourage you to go to the website. There you can find any of our archive podcasts. You can send us an email about how God's working in your life or a prayer request. Or you can give to our ministries financially by clicking the giving button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Have a blessed day.